So we're applying the limit of the Riemann sum here to find the exact area beneath this curve on this interval. We start by spelling out the limit as n approaches infinity. We apply our sigma notation, i equals 1 to n. And then we start with the function, and we have to come up with what we want to plug into the function. So as we recall, when we plug into the function, we're taking whatever a is, so that's 1. We're adding on, okay, it's i delta x. So we need to figure out what our delta x is going to be. Remember, delta x corresponds to the base of all the rectangles here. We're using an infinite amount of rectangles, basically. So find delta x, what do we do? Okay, 4 minus 1, <coughs> e minus a over n. So our delta x is going to be 3 over n. So what we're plugging in the function, we're plugging in 1 plus 3 over n, i. And then we have to remember that we're multiplying on that delta x, so we're multiplying on 3 over n. Okay, for a few steps now, we're going to do some algebra. We're going to start with this piece, start to expand upon that piece, and since we're only playing with the part where we're plugging in the function, the rest of this other notation stays. We're not ready to apply that yet. So to find f of 1 plus 3 over ni, we're going to take the 1 plus 3 over ni. We're going to plug back into the function for the x's that we see. So we'll have 1 plus 3 over ni squared plus 3 times 1 plus 3 over ni minus 2. All right, that spells out the function. We're replacing all those x values with 1 plus 3 over ni. Got to remember, though, we're multiplying on the 3 over n at the end. And now we got to do some uh, simplifying with respect to this piece. As we simplify that piece, we start with the binomial expansion here. Maybe off to the side, figure out that binomial expansion. Take 1 plus 3 over ni times 1 plus over ni. We foil that out. Multiplying the first got 1, multiply the outside, got 1 times 3 over ni, so plus 3 over ni. Multiply the inside, got 3 over ni times 1, so we're adding on 3 over ni. And then if we multiply the last terms here, 3 over ni times 3 over ni, we've got 9 over n squared i squared. So we'll combine these, make that plus 6 over ni, but this 1 plus 6 over ni plus 9 over n squared i squared becomes this binomial expansion. So if we want to substitute that back in, got our limit as n approaches infinity, got our sigma notation still hanging out. Plugging in for that expansion, we've got 1 plus 6 over ni plus 9 over n squared i squared. If we continue through the simplification part here, we got to distribute that 3 through. So we got plus 3 plus the 9 over ni minus that 2. Still got the 3 over n here that we got to multiply through. Now, I could go ahead and multiply the 3 over n through, or it might be better to take what I have here and see if I can simplify that a little bit further, combine some like terms. So if we combine the like terms, I'll carry this over now.
let's see here. Let's start with the constants. With the constants, what do we got? We've got one, we got three, so four. We're subtracting two, so we got two. With the I terms, we've got six over NI. We've got nine over NI. We're adding those together. Got common denominators already, so that's going to be 15 over NI. And then we've got an I squared term, just one I squared term. Yep. Plus nine over N squared I squared. Still needing to multiply through the three over N. All right. Finally multiplying the three over N through. But one more step here. We apply our limit with our sigma notation. We're about ready to do something with that notation. With our final step of simplification here, you've got 2 times 3 over n, so that's 6 over n, plus 3 over n times 15 over n, that's going to be 45 over n squared i, plus got 3 over n times 9 over n squared, that's going to be 27 over n cubed i squared. Having finally simplified it, we can apply the sigma part because we're going to be able to use our theorems now. All right? We know 6 over n here represents a constant. So not applying a limit just yet. But that's 6 over n, since that's a constant idea, applying the sigma notation to it, we've got 6 <laughs> over n times n. All right, plus we've got 45 over n squared times i, so 45 over n squared gets multiplied to our theorem for i. The theorem for i, if we substitute in, is n squared plus n over 2. And our last term here, applying our sigma notation, we've got 27 over n cubed times i squared, the theorem for i squared, that's 20, or not 20, sorry, 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n all over 6. <coughs> so we substitute in our n formulas, so to speak. Now we simplify with respect to these formulas we plugged in. And we understand as we apply the limit through this, we're going to get to our, our final calculation. So we're dropping out the limit at this point. I'm understanding with this 6 over n times n, the n's are canceling out, leaving me with just 6. I'm adding on. I'm appreciating because of how the algebra works out and how the limit works out here that all I have to do for this next piece is take 45 and divide by 2. The limit gets applied there to the rest of it. A lot of zeros unfold, so the rest of it's insignificant. We're adding on. And with this last part, the same kind of thing is going to happen. I'm just going to take 27 times 2 divide by 6. Because once again, you apply that limit to the remaining stuff, a lot of zeros unfold. So there's the calculation that I need. I do that calculation. Fraction answer, decimal answer, doesn't really matter at this point. Either one's going to represent our exact area. So what do we get here? <coughs> 